My name is Stanton Glantz. I'm a professor of medicine at the University of California, San Francisco, where I direct the tobacco research program. So young people being actively involved in anti-tobacco activism has two really important benefits. The first thing is substantively they can be very powerful in countering the influence the tobacco industry has on politicians. And the act of being involved in that issue and engaging others in that issue is a very powerful anti-smoking message. It's much more powerful than telling people they're going to die when they're 50 years old. Much, much more powerful. And in fact, one of the real shortcomings of the anti-smoking advertising campaigns that have been done here in England is that they're all just directed at smokers telling them to quit smoking rather than exposing the manipulative tactics of the tobacco industry. The really important thing is that smoking in movies is the largest single reason that kids start to smoke. And so if you're serious about reducing youth smoking, you need to get smoking out of youth rated films. And I think if they do that, that will in very short order send shockwaves back across the Atlantic to America and force Hollywood to stop making youth-oriented youth movies that promote smoking. I'm Andrea Crossfield. I'm the director of Smoke Free Northwest. Smoke Free Northwest is a program that runs across the whole of the Northwest region that's funded by primary care trusts. Our ambition is to make smoking history for children and young people in the region and to tackle smoking-related health inequalities. The Smoke and Mirrors Weekend um, is a part of that wider approach to tobacco control. Uh, we recognise that we need to engage with young people and if we're going to um, develop activities that are for young people, if we're going to develop campaigns that are for young people, we need to work with young people to do that. This weekend has been an opportunity to understand young people's views, to hear what they've got to say, and there has been so much passion and so much energy in the rooms over the course of the last two days. Young people do want to make a difference. Young people feel really passionately about this agenda. You know, they want to tackle tobacco industry practices like child labour, like deforestation. They want to uncover the truth about tobacco industry lies and manipulation, and we want to support them to do that. It's important to give young people um, a means of giving them a voice, and the phrase see through the illusion, you know, because that's what it is, and they create the illusion when people are very, very young, so it's important to engage people when they're young so that they can spot the illusion and see through it. I think this is a really, really important subject because um, it's so insidious. I mean, it's just the whole problem is, is that it doesn't kill people for 25, 30 years. And it's very difficult to combat that and say to somebody, stop doing something now which might damage you in 10, 20, 30 years. And I thought the best way to do it is actually just not to show it in any of my programs because they're very, you know, making very popular drama that's seen by a lot of young people. Never to have a hero with a cigarette in, in their hand was the key, the key message, you know, that actually you can be cool without having to resort to things like that. So. Day one and all the programmes, there was absolutely a you know, total ban on tobacco. Initially, me and Darren got involved, mm. and uh, it was just it's a really good campaign, it's something that's you know, it's good for the North West, it's good for these young people to be here learning about it. Yeah. And we wrote Carly in because the uh, diary was clear, <laughs> no other work on. I always think, why not? If you can help, why not? And um, I've done a presentation with DMIST before, so that kind of opened my eyes to what was going on. And I just think it's shocking what we've learned over the weekend. And yeah, it's really. Know. If you can put a stop to it and help, then why not? Really opened my eyes, I had no idea. A lot of the lectures and things we've been chatting about have been amazing. Yeah. My name's uh, Professor Gerard Hastings from the Open University and Stirling University in Scotland. It's been fantastic to come down to the Smoke and Mirrors campaign because I think it's so important that young people engage with the issue of tobacco. It's, it's a big health issue, but it's also a big political issue. And getting kids involved in that, I think, is one of the best ways in which we can change it. The reality is, if kids didn't take up smoking, the tobacco industry would be out of business in a generation. That's an incredibly powerful position to be in. I mean, tobacco marketing, like other forms of marketing, is essentially about understanding the needs of your customer. For the tobacco industry, the key customer group is young people because adults don't start smoking, so they've, they've got to get people while they're young. And what they need to do 
is cater to the, to the social and psychological needs that young people feel as they go through adolescence. So coping with life skills, really, you know, how to be an adult, how to cope with the rites of passage of moving from childhood into adulthood. And they present tobacco to them in a way that meets those needs. And the principal tool they have for doing that is through branding. So they, you know, children don't start smoking cigarettes or tobacco, they start smoking a particular brand. In recent years, of course, we've had a, a prohibition on tobacco advertising, but nonetheless, they still have the pack, which has been developed and enhanced in any number of ways, from holograms to new ways of opening slide packs and so on, and also the display of those at point of sale. If you look what's happened at point of sale over the last five years, as advertising has disappeared, point of sale displays become more and more elaborate so you know, they wouldn't look out of place on Blackpool Pleasure Beach you know they're, 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 they're all bells and whistles and beautiful and very attractive and you know very inappropriately positioned right next to the sweeties and the other products that would appeal to children. Yes I'm Jean King director of tobacco control at Cancer Research UK. Well we want to stop the next generation of smokers and it's really important that we engage young people in getting messages across that work for them and crucial messages in, in our view at Cancer Research UK is to understand you know that the tobacco industry has been lying and has been marketing its products to young people for decades and we have to stop this and so Smoke and Mirrors is a really important initiative it's an exciting initiative and I really hope that it goes far. I'm Ian McCartney MP for Makerfield in Wigan I'm here today to support Smoke and Mirrors why? Because Smoke and Mirrors are working with young people to step, prevent them being involved in smoking and where they are to help them get off smoking. Why? Because 340,000 young people a year start smoking and by the age of 19, 80% of them are hooked on nicotine. In the North West, 14,000 people die every year from smoking. That's 14,000 people who never grew up to see their children growing up, who never grew up to see their grandparents as grandparents seeing their grandchildren being born. This is a calamity and therefore in Parliament this coming week we're voting to get rid of vending machines. Why? Because vending machines are overwhelmingly used by children as young as 10 years of age. Thousands of them every day use vending machines to get their cigarettes. Now vending machines can't be used to sell children alcohol, drugs, solvents, fireworks or knives. So why are they allowed to sell them cigarettes, the biggest colour of them all? So please support this campaign and get every young person in the North West motivated to get them off smoking or not to start at all. Yeah, hi, um, my name's Emily and I work for People and Planet, which is um, a student campaigning network, lots of young people campaigning on global issues like climate change and that kind of thing. Well, um, I really wanted to come along and work with young people here and help them develop their ideas of the issues they cared about and help them develop how they could actually try and make a difference. I'm Martin Dockerell, I'm Director of Research and Policy at a ASH, Action on Smoking and Health. I think when young people make that first, quote, choice to smoke, they're offered a cigarette and that's all they see. They just see the cigarette uh, and the pleasure they're going to get in sharing it with a friend. What they don't see is the bigger picture uh, they don't see uh, the child labourers, they don't see the environmental uh, devastation, they don't see the uh, decades of annual testing that's gone on, they don't see the devious, deceptive marketing that's gone in to getting them to accept that first cigarette. 